Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, folks. Uh, welcome to another episode of Pro Football in the 1970s. Uh, I'm your host, Joe Zagorski. Uh, today, we're talking about the playoffs. And naturally, this time of the year, the NFL playoffs are on the minds of many thousands of pro football fans across the nation. The same goes for the teams that are preparing for the playoffs. Now, in the 1970s, there were fewer playoff teams than there were today. And one of the reasons for that is because there are fewer overall teams in the NFL back then. Today, we have a total of 32 NFL teams, but back in the 1970s, that total number was 26. And then beginning in 1976, that that number went up and increased to 28 teams with the addition of Seattle and Tampa Bay. And, of course, that was in our nation's bicentennial year. Now, back in the 1970s, the NFL had a total of eight playoff teams every year until 1978, when that total number of playoff teams increased to 10 with five playoff teams representing each conference. And just like today, the playoffs during the 1970s seemed to bring out the best and the most spirited play in those teams that were vying for a chance to move on towards a championship. But on occasion, it could also bring out the worst in a team. Now let's face it, some teams choke during the playoffs. Some teams play exceedingly well during the regular season, only to lay a collective egg in the postseason. Now, in this episode, we're going to tackle a couple of playoff games where a couple of teams made some untimely mistakes, which spelled defeat for them. Let's start with the 1972 Cleveland Browns. They put together a pretty good, actually a great, 10-4 season after dropping their home opener to Green Bay. Uh, The third-year quarterback for the Browns was Mike Phipps, and he came into his own that year, throwing for 1,994 yards and 13 touchdowns. Now keep in mind, 1972 was deemed the year of the runner, and it truly was. A total of 10 different running backs across the league ran for at least 1,000 yards that season, and that was a first in the NFL. The Browns had a future Hall of Fame halfback in Leroy Kelly, and he was greatly depended upon by Cleveland head coach Nick Scorich to carry the Cleveland offense. Unfortunately for the 72 Browns, they were the AFC's wildcard team, And as such, they were slated to go down to Miami to play the undefeated Dolphins in the first round of the playoffs. On paper, the game appeared to be a mismatch, but the Browns played what could have been described as their best game of the year. They held Miami to 20 points, and the Dolphins needed to score a late touchdown near the end of the fourth quarter to pull out a 20-14 win. But were it not for several egregious mistakes by Cleveland's offense, and their special teams, we would still be looking for a team to complete a perfect season. Mike Phipps was guilty of throwing five costly interceptions in that game. Take away, say, two of those interceptions, and we are probably talking about a Cleveland upset win. Combine that with a blocked punt that the Browns gave up in the first quarter, which was returned for a touchdown by Miami special teams player Charlie Babb, and we are definitely talking a Cleveland victory. Then there is the 1978 Houston Oilers. Behind their future Hall of Fame rookie tailback Earl Campbell, the Oilers put together an impressive 10-6 record, good enough for one of the two AFC wildcard spots. The league went to two wildcard spots in 78 for, uh, you know, each conference. The Oilers somehow managed to win two playoff games as the visiting team first over Miami, and then over the New England Patriots. They were not favored in either game, yet there they were, just one step away from the Super Bowl. But that one step was a big one. 
The Oilers were slated to go up to Pittsburgh to play the Steelers, a team with plenty of playoff experience. The 1978 AFC title game could not have turned out worse for the Oilers. The freezing rain at Pittsburgh's Three River Stadium was relentless, and the below freezing temperatures sure did not help a team like Houston, who played half of their games in a dome stadium. The Oilers committed nine turnovers in this AFC title game in 78, including five interceptions by quarterback Dan Pastorini. It was so bad for Houston that in the span of 48 seconds in the second quarter, the Steelers would score 17 points to take a 31-3 halftime lead, and the Steelers would coast to a 34-5 win. My point with this episode is that playoff pressure can really do some major damage to teams. Some really good teams that had great regular seasons. And that playoff pressure can do damage to older, more experienced teams as well as the younger playoff teams. It was true during the 1970s, and it is still true today. Thanks again for listening in to today's episode. Sorry, no trivia question this week, but maybe the next time. You guys take care and have a great 2022. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.